Go ahead. Go ahead. Hope we just get through firing the HK MR 556A1 for the first time. This is a piston driven AR 15, and in the grand scheme of things, it's an AR. But it has a lot of small refinements, some of which I'll show you, some of which you can read about below. These have been out for two or three years now. When they first came out, they were 3,000 and up if you could even find them. Now they're getting down to around 2,500 new, which is still a lot of money, but it is a really nice rifle. The problem with this rifle is there's a lot of hype surrounding it, and there's been a lot of internet backlash because of the hype. People saying it's not worth it, it's not this. Right off the bat, I will say this about its reliability. To date, with all the 223s we've shot out here, AUG, four, several AR-15 direct impingement guns, this is only the second gun that will run Tula 55 grain and 62 grain reliably. The only other gun is the Polish Rydum Archer. No other gun we've tried will run it. This one did. We just put, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 rounds through without a problem. I also put uh, brown bear through it, and I think we've got some wolf out here we'll be testing with too. But it seems like yeah, it'll run fine with steel cased. Got some Remington out too for brass use. This gun is mostly in stock configuration. I do have a Harris 9x13 swivel bipod on it. This is a HK foregrip made by HK Parts. Made just like the original but a lot cheaper. Standard ladder rail covers by Magpul. Has HK front and rear doctor sights which come with the gun. Has an HK416 E1 style buttstock with the E2 style concave butt plate. That's again standard. Has ambidextrous safety. Everyone talks about how you can flick it on and off with the trigger uncocked. Yes, that's true. And it definitely doesn't hurt to have it that way for safety, especially at the range. Has a reversible charging handle. You can flip the latch to either side, which is nice for some people. Definitely doesn't hurt. Standard bolt release. Standard uh, trigger feel. I like the trigger. Some have said it's heavy. It, it's real smooth on this particular gun. This one does have a Knight's Armament trigger guard on it, which is a little different. The standard trigger guard is just an AR-15 style. The dust cover is made of polymer. Contrary to a lot of internet um, talk, modern four HK 416s do have polymer dust covers. So the MR556A1 uses the same, uh, same dust cover. In fact, most of this entire upper is exactly the same as on a HK416. The same uh, rail system, same 16 in a half inch barrel. Now, the barrel is imported from Germany as a 80% blank and then finished out in the US by Daniel Defense. It is a little heavier under the handguards for having a match target profile, but other than that, it's fine. And of course, the other point that people talk about a lot is the fact that it's not chrome lined. That's a big debate. I don't have time or the inclination to get into it here and now. You can do research on your own. Chrome has its good and bad points, but I will say this. Not being chrome-lined is definitely not a deal-breaker for me personally. That's all I'm going to say about that. The flash hider is A1 style, but it's not exactly the same. It's a little different. Interestingly, it doesn't use a lock washer. It just screws on. The handguard unit is... is uh, the whole quad rail is milled from one piece of alloy. And it just comes off if you unscrew this nut with an Allen wrench, I think it's a 5mm, it just slides off the barrel, which gives you easy access to the gas piston system. Now, one thing people talk about, and I thought before I bought the gun that would drive me crazy, were these takedown pins, front and rear. You know, there's a hole in them. You cannot at all even move them a millimeter out. You can't push them. Now, the the reason they did that, they said, was for a target fit, and if you look, there is no play between the upper and the lower. It's solid. Now, there is a tool in the buttstock 
which you just twist off here. It's a little stiff on mine. Some say that there's a release, but mine's not. There's a tool in there you use to take it off. I also have an oil bottle and a cleaning rope and brushes in there from, I think they're made by Steyr. If I can get this thing back on, getting it lined up for me is a little difficult. Set it down for a sec. <laughs> Getting it lined back up once it starts to lock in, it's easy. But anyway, that's the tool you use. But you don't have to. What's neat, there we go, sorry about that guys, is, again, contrary to internet belief, the best tool you can use to break that apart is a standard 223 bullet. Just put it in and press it out. Now, I'm going to have to flip it around so I don't drop my gun on myself here, guys, but... Just uh, press it in, and there you go. The pin is out, just pull it the rest of the way, and there's your internals with the bullet. You've got the bolt carrier in here, like an AR-15, very standard internals. The, uh, the bolt carrier itself is very similar to an AR-15, except it has a firing pin safety. To lock it back in, just press it in a little ways, and then use your tool, in my case a bullet, back in that hole. Anyway, what's kind of neat is the, the pin that retains the firing pin inside the bolt carrier is also self-contained, so you won't have a chance to lose it. See, there we go, back on. Easier when you're sitting down. The bolt looks like something more out of an HK G36 or Armalite AR-180 to me. It's not a standard bolt. It also has a spring in it which keeps it forward and also helps the firing pin remain backward. So it's a little bit different of a bolt arrangement, even though the carrier is quite similar. Not a whole lot else to be said. It's a really nice rifle. We shoot it, it was shooting real well for us. Trigger is nice, at least on my example. It, because it is a heavy gun, it's about nine pounds loaded up like this. It's a lot better to shoot off this here Harris bipod. We were having a lot more fun shooting it prone. But uh, since it's more or less kind of intended to be an automatic rifle, a saw weapon, that's okay. I have plenty of other light AR-15 type guns. It's one of the guns I never disliked, but the price turned me off. But once I actually got to handle one and, and you know, fire one, it's growing on me. I, I like it. I think it's a quality gun. And what I especially like for my own collection and peace of mind is this is really the only direct, I mean, excuse me, gas piston AR type rifle that's seen extensive combat. It's the primary issue weapon of Norway. It's also several thousand have been purchased by the U.S. Marines used as the M27 and uh, several police agencies and security agencies have used them. A few other gun, piston guns have been purchased but only a few hundred have been fielded like the L, LWRC have been out there in small numbers but really this is the only one that's seen extensive combat. And it's an HK, and you know, all that goes with. And really contrary to popular belief, HK's customer service isn't bad in the U.S. I've heard since they opened up the New Hampshire factory and are working more here and getting a little more back into the civilian market, really their customer service has gone up. So I like it. Is it worth the high price tag? Strictly speaking, probably not. But it is a nice gun. It'll probably be collectible as time goes on. It does come with some nice sights. Everything's machined metal, everything's battle tested, you know, solid gun, you're not going to have heavy parts breakage. It does take, you know, several standard AR parts or can. I do kind of personally like that you've got storage space in the buttstock, which is, by the way, is the 7 position, comes with. And there's also a storage space in the pistol grip, which can hold a couple of batteries, uh, quite a few things. Right now I've got uh, four Allen wrenches, the original trigger guard, and some uh, cleaning patches in the pistol grip. So. I like that I could store a lot on board this weapon. In fact, every tool I would need, including the handguard tool, the tool to remove the bipod, and so on, is stored in my pistol grip. And just in case, I do have a backup takedown tool in there too. Never hurts to have backups. But as I just showed you, you can use a bullet. So uh, yeah, I'm just I'm pretty happy with it. It goes well with my G36K and my USC to UMP, and it kind of continues on. And plus, plus, I do like it that it's American military issue. Heavy, but reliable, and uh, yeah. Oh, finally, this and the, the mag in the gun is a modern HK pattern waffle polymer mag, which we've had absolutely no trouble out of. They're a lot cheaper and lighter weight than the traditional steel mags, 
So, uh, yeah. Well, we'll move on from here. Thanks.